Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, I'm your host, Jay Briggs, here with Picks from the Doghouse NFL Edition. Look, we'll get back to regular scheduled programming this week. We had some technical difficulties. We had some illnesses and things of that nature that popped up. So this episode of Picks from the Doghouse NFL Edition is going to be a little different. It's just going to be me and Mitch just walking you guys through every single game on the card for NFL Week 2. We'll get back to regular schedule programming next week where we bring in all the guys from Pig Dogs, including Big Al McMorty, and get back to regular schedule programming. But don't worry. I still believe you guys will really enjoy this episode this week. Me and Mitch had a really great week one, and I think we're poised for another really great week two. So without further ado, here's our thoughts and opinions on NFL Week 2. Remember, my best bets, the best that I had the most money on, the bets that I like the most, you can scoop those up over at Pig Dogs Premium. But again, we're going to cover every single game on the card right here, right now. So without further ado, let's do exactly that. Let's make some money this week. Let's continue to kick the crap out of the books. Let's hop right into this week's NFL action. First game of the week. Hey, Thursday Night Football. We got the Miami Dolphins at home at the crib with the Buffalo Bills coming into town. Weird week for both teams, I thought, last week. Mitch, we watched both of these two teams together last week. How you feeling uh, rolling into this? Well, you know, looking at the Bills, they got off to a slow start last week. So did the Dolphins in their game. And the weird thing about this game particularly is the Dolphins generally start the season on the road. The way the NFL usually schedules it is the Dolphins start usually three or four, you know, of their first five games are on the road. And, um, you know, this way they're back loaded when the weather's bad across the rest of the country. Uh, the TV execs and the NFL people, they all get a nice little trip to Miami with the excuse built in. But the thing is, is that the Bills have usually played very, very well against the Dolphins over the years, even the games in Miami. And, uh, you know, I think once again, this Dolphins team is going to be put to the test. But the A-Chain and um, Mostert, both injured for the Dolphins, really going to be tested on the backfield depth here. And, of course, we know Tua, when put to the test, has really come up short a lot of these times over the years. In fact, getting hit and, you know, bumped around himself. So, you know, I think that getting points on the road here with the Bills against the coach that doesn't really know how to add and, you know, doesn't really care about winning by three or seven or anything like that, I'm going to take the points with the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I, I – this game, this game's tough because I'm not in love with either team. Uh, the Bills were down pretty significantly early in that football game to the Cardinals. Um, they did fight back. Josh Allen made some incredible plays in that game. But I still had some major question marks about this Buffalo Bills team. But, you know, I know you're a Dolphins fan, but at the same time, you're really honest about your team. And you're right. Um I have major question marks about McDaniel as well. To be honest, both teams I don't even think should have won last week and barely pulled their games out. Shout out to them for doing so. You know, the good teams usually do that when games are not supposed to. In this one, though, Mitch, I I think I'm going with the Dolphins. I'm I'm rolling with Miami here. I think they're the better football team. I I think they're going to be the better football team over the course of the season. At home at the crib, I think they have slight advantage. I think Buffalo takes a slight step back this season, like I've been saying over the offseason. I'm going to roll with Miami. I'm going to lay the points here in this one. I might have to send you my Zubaz hat. <laughs> <laughs> On to Sunday's action. We have the Baltimore Ravens at home at the crib with the Las Vegas Raiders coming into town. Both teams took an L last week. You know, the Ravens, as I keep saying, I I don't know. I don't know about the Ravens. They're not the team from last year or the year before. Um, they're not as deep as they have been in years past. They're top-heavy this season. You know, when you've got to pay your your quarterback, that usually means some of your other team, some of your other teams, um, some of your other players are gone, and that's kind of what has happened here to the Ravens. I mean, they're most definitely the better football team in this game, and at home I'm expecting them to win. That's not the million-dollar question we're asking here. The Raiders, I felt like, looked exactly how I thought they were going to look last week, and they're going to be exactly who we think they are. They have a below-average quarterback and a below-average roster with a probably below-average coach. Um, 
And this one, though, going up against such a public team, everybody loves the Ravens. Everybody loves Lamar Jackson. I think they might be the play in this one. I think this is a game we could possibly get on an off number. Ravens offense not clicking as many people think it might. And uh, Ravens probably kicking more field goals than people might think. This might be a nine-point win. You know, that hook might loom large in this one, Mitch. I think I'm rolling with the Raiders. Not a game I'm totally in love with, though. What you thinking? I'm thinking, you know, the Ravens playing on extended rest here after playing Thursday night um, last week. And, of course, you know, both these teams now have a game under their belt, so that doesn't really matter. But the Raiders, you know, what happened, what we saw with them in that second half and primarily the fourth quarter of that tight game that they played against the, the Los Angeles Chargers, second week in a row on the road here for the Raiders. So, you know, the thing is they start to wear down in that game. We saw J.K. Dobbins really start to, you know, hammer them late in the game. And I just have to be somewhat concerned about the conditioning there. I know Antonio Pierce has really had the Raiders competitive since he's taken over the team. But what we also have here for the Ravens is a back that really knows how to run over players late in the game in third and fourth. You know, and I think if J.K. Dobbins can run you over in the third and fourth quarter, I hate to see what Derrick Henry's going to do to you. I'm going to take the Ravens in this one, lay the big number. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And then you know Lamar, early season, how he likes to get out of the backfield as well. So the rush defense for the Raiders was really concerning. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, some fantasy owners that were those two guys are will be happy this week. <laughs> they should be. keep it rolling let's keep it rolling we got the cleveland browns out on the road facing the jacksonville jaguars both teams took an l last week mitch how you feeling about these two teams rolling into the week two the thing is is that the jaguars you know were a team that boy they certainly just looked like they had the game and they kind of let it get away i mean travis at the end probably you know really choked that game away and i i, I hate to point to to one player especially a good player who's done so many good things um, and say that he lost the game for him. But I'm not really sure any other way that you can go in that particular game because in NFL football, it usually does come down to three plays or less that makes the difference, especially um, in these games these days. The Browns were absolutely manhandled by the Cowboys, just absolutely slaughtered. And I don't see it getting any better for them here in this particular game. I think that, you know, Miles Garrett certainly, you know, still one of the best players in the game. And, you know, you certainly have – some talent on this Cleveland team and you know I think they'll be able to move the football but I just think Jacksonville is the better team and I think at, at home for their home opener coming off of that game I expect a big game out of Etienne yeah Mitch I'm with you in this one I'm taking the Jags as well I'm not I'm Cleveland has some major issues major major issues um a they need Nick Chubb back, you know, and they need him to come back and be a top five running back again in the league. Cleveland was a rushing football team, and I felt like last week Dallas didn't let them rush at all. And Deshaun Watson, well, he's not that top five quarterback from Houston anymore. He's barely top 20 in this current league right now, and that's just the realization of things. Um, defensively, they were the number one defense in the NFL last year, you know, they played they didn't play all that well against Dallas last week. I know that Dallas, you know, put them in some tough spots uh with the special teams and you know some, the turnovers defensively, but I have some major question marks about this Cleveland team and I still think currently they're overrated and overvalued. The Jags I thought they just straight up coughed that game up last week and I'm with you Mitch. It was kind of ETN. He just like you said, the NFL you can usually look at the turnover margin. Whoever wins the turnover margin usually puts themselves in a really good position to win football games. And then when you're fumbling at the one-yard line like that in a really tight game, well, <laughs> the writing's on the wall. Outside of that, though, I still think the Jags put it together here in this one, like you said, in the home opener. I'm on Jacksonville. Don't love it, but I think it's the play, and I think they do get this one done at home at the crib. I think it's going to be a physical game, that's for sure. Me too, me too. Next game up, we got the Tennessee Titans at home at the crib with the New York Jets coming into town. Mitch, uh, we're going to be mad at those Titans for, you know, pretty good while. <laughs> they burnt us uh, last week. 
But in all honesty, when I look at this football game, I feel like I have to take the Titans. Um, the one thing I thought the Titans did good last week was rush the football. And the one thing I thought the Jets looked absolutely atrocious at in week one, stopping the rush. So are the Jets the better team? Probably. Are they overrated, overvalued? Most definitely. Um, you know, I think everybody's going to overreact to the fashion that the Titans lost last week. Trust me, I, I was there. I'm just as hurt. I want to be just as mad at them. I want to fade them out of spite just like everybody else. But that's not what we got to do here. Got to look at each game objectively um, and as a singular game. And when I look at this one, I think Titans are the play. I think – I think hopefully they don't ask Will Levis to do too much. Hopefully they look at what San Francisco was able to do, which was really rush the football and allow Brock Purdy to be just a game manager. Hopefully Will Levis will just game manage this football game and the Titans and Tony Pollard in their rushing game uh, can keep this game close. If not, at home at the crib, win it outright. So I'm fading the Jets here in this one. I thought the rush defense was really, really concerning. Mitch, how are you feeling here, Titans, Jets? I like, I'm with you on the Titans. I think that, uh, you know, I like the way the Pollard ran the football. You know, it's 16 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown was an eight, was a 26 yard breakaway run. Um, probably would have been good from 50 or 60 yards, maybe even more. Um, but the end zone got in the way. Um, Levis, absolutely horrible, but you can only hope that that was a learning experience for him. He single handedly gave that game away. I think, you know, there's a certain thing that you, that you coach and a certain thing that you learn and a certain thing that we hear as fans in the NFL protect the ball. And I think Levis just got really sloppy, really careless. And some things that might work for him in high school or college didn't work for him in the NFL, like, you know, rolling the ball out. I don't know. I don't know what that was, but, um, I have no idea what he was doing, but um, I think that he learned something from there. I think this game is just tighter than the three and a half, you know, that we're seeing on it now. And, you know, while the Jets are now on a short week, still on the road for the second game in a row. And I think the same thing, you know, here here with the Jets is that I think they have a chance. Aaron Rodgers, you know, the miracle comeback and the late field goal and all that stuff I think could happen. But I still think that the Jets, I'm still very, very concerned with the coaching and the personnel. We saw a lot of these same talented players on this Jets team last year, and they couldn't win. They were missing one player, Aaron Rodgers. He's a difference maker, but still, you know, these are professional guys on the Jets that are supposed to be all world. And, uh, you know, they didn't look to anything but that last season. So I'm going to roll with the Titans. I'm going to take the points. Next game up, we got the Los Angeles Chargers out on the road facing the Carolina Panthers. Panthers. Six and a half point home dogs in this one, man. Well, I don't think anybody thought the Panther season would start off that bad. I mean, we knew they were probably the worst team in the NFL, but they get taken behind the woodshed in the fashion that they did by the Saints and Derek Carr was still kind of eye opening and head scratching. Um, in my opinion, I thought they would have at least, you know, make it a competitive in a division battle, but, you know, it wasn't competitive at all. The Chargers, let's talk about the Chargers. The Chargers, I thought, played a below-average team last week in the Raiders, who we've already talked about, um, and they did win the football game. I got the Chargers as just a straight-up middle-of-the-pack team. Like, they're like 15-16 in the league, in my opinion. And I don't want to be laying six and a half points on the road with the middle of the pack team. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this line grew as the week goes by. As ugly as it is, as disgusting as it is, I know, trust me, I get it. We just watched them boys get taken behind the woodshed. Sometimes you got to make ugly bets, man. Sometimes you got to bet bad teams, and that's what I'm doing here this week, man. I'm taking the Carolina Panthers, Mitch. I want the points in my back pocket. I Hopefully their defense plays a little better and they can keep this game somewhat competitive. What do you think? Think I'm crazy? No, I think I'm with you on this one with the Panthers. I, I like having the points in my back pocket. You know, it's an NFL team coming off of a bad game on the road, returning home. Um, they're not going to be that bad. And I think, you know, while we, I was impressed with the Chargers running game, I was impressed the way their defense played in the second half. I think you're right. They played against a subpar Raiders team who, uh, you know, Gardner Minishu is their quarterback. I mean, 
it's it's not a lot of threat there. I think you know Bryce Young has a lot to learn still in the NFL. He's still very much a work in progress. Um, you know, starting last year as a rookie, but <clears throat> I think he does have enough upside here. You know, if people seem to just dismiss that Justin Herbert only threw for 144 yards last week, and you know he his top receivers all were in about the 30 yard range. So this is a typical Jim Harbaugh type thing where it's very very conservative. Just try and get the win. We saw this the last time he was in the NFL. He's three, four, five point wins. He's more than fine with that. And you know what that means? Always good to be fading his team, laying big points, especially on the road. Hey, I think you just talked me onto the Panthers a little bit more. It's going to be an ugly bet. And as we get closer to Sunday, I don't think that the betting public are going to be too in love with betting the Panthers this week. So I think we might get a little more value as the week grows by here on Carolina. My guess is going to be a lot of circuit plays on the uh, on the other side. <laughs> maybe, maybe, and we might just might be on the Panthers. I don't know. I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> Next game up, we got the Minnesota Vikings at home at the crib with the San Francisco 49ers coming into town. San Francisco, I thought, looked really good in week one. But you know who else looked good? The Minnesota Vikings. Is it fool's gold for Minnesota, Mitch? Or are they going to be better than people think? What do you think? I think they're going to be a little better than people think. But at the same time, I think it still might be some fool's gold. I don't think they're going to be as good as they looked um, in that opening game unless they get to play the Giants a few times every season. I think, you know, that part of it was the Giants. I think part of it was was the was the Vikings. Obviously, they took advantage of, of the Giants, did everything that they had to do. And, you know, that's all you can really ask of them. The Niners here on short rest coming off of Monday Night Football. Remember, you know, they played the Jets and you know they played them very well. They also had six months to game plan for that game, and so a little bit different look than a short week with, uh, you know, a backup quarterback in there as well, who actually, you know, was an NFL starter. I think this game is just closer than the number. I'm going to take the points with the home team. I always like these dome teams at home. Um, you know, it's their home opener. It's just a lot of good things here happening for the Vikings. I don't know if they get the win, but I think the line should be closer to five. Hey, we're in agreement again. I think I want the points in my pack pocket with the Vikings as well. The Niners are definitely the better football team. Flat out, the better football team. Um, we'll see if they're able to rush the football again on the Minnesota Vikings like they were on the Jets. I'm seeing that Christian McCaffrey is going to be out again here in this week. So it's going to be Mason, Jordan Mason, a.k.a. Baby Marshawn, as I've been calling him, because that's how he looked in week one. Uh, rushing the football behind that amazing offensive line. The Niners are going to be really good again this season. I think they're going to be one or two in the NFC again. You know, I, I'm, I've i come around on Brock Purdy. He is what he is. He's a really, 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 really good game manager, and there's nothing wrong with that. And he's surrounded by some really good weapons. And defensively, man, the Niners be flying around the football field. But on the road here in this one, you know, I don't think they're going to have – the same exact success rushing the football like they had last week. I think this Minnesota defense is a slightly better than people may give it credit for. And Sam Darnold is, I'm just asking him not to wreck the car. Just don't wreck the car for me, Sam Darnold at home at the crib. You got one of the best weapons in the league in Justin Jefferson, hit him, feed your running back, keep this game competitive. I think the Niners win it 24, 20. Uh, I think the Vikings do enough to cover. Yeah, I, you know, I, I have to agree with you, like I said, and, uh, you know, I just think that this building in Minnesota, just a lot tougher than people give it credit for. Next game up, we got the Seattle Seahawks out on the road facing the New England Patriots. Patriots, three and a half point home dogs after pulling the upsets of upsets last week on the road in Cincinnati. Mitch, are the... Patriots better than people think? Was it just a little luck involved? Or did the Cincinnati Bengals just shoot themselves in the foot and the Patriots are still ass? How are you feeling here about the Patriots and this game this week? I thought the Patriots, what they did is they managed to not beat themselves. And I think that's a big part of it. And that's kind of who they are and who they have been under Bill Belichick, who Mayo was, you know, as a player. And kind of, you know, what we saw in week one there against the Bengals. You know, we saw a Bengals team at home running the ball into the end zone for the touchdown, getting hit and fumbling the ball. 
We saw, you know, interceptions. We saw things that were untip were just not typical of what we've seen from the Bengals in recent years. We just saw a very steady play from the Patriots, plus the ability to pound the football between the tackles, which is, you know, you play defense, you run the football. This is football 101. It always works in the NFL, and um, it continued to work last week. When we look at the other side of it, though, Seattle, you know, getting the win against the Broncos, they kind of gutted it out in that game. And I just think that they are a better team. I don't think we're going to see a lot of great things from the Patriots this season. I think that might be the, their top performance of the year, what we saw in Cincinnati. And But I think that we're going to see a pretty dependable team. So I'm not going to be laying a lot of points against the Patriots, but I think here at, at – you know, in this three and a half range, oh man, I wish I could get that hook. But it, I, even without it, I think I'm going to take the uh, take the Seahawks. Yeah, Mitch, this is a game I'm not in love with at all. Um, I don't like this game at all. I don't really want to lay three and a hook on the road with a Geno Smith led Seahawks team. Are they the better football team? Yes, but I also don't want to overreact to the Patriots win from last week. I think what I want to do in this game, I don't take a lot of totals, but I think I'm going to take a total in this one. I want to take the under. Um, I think the Patriots we saw from them last week, what their game plan is going to be pretty much every week. Turn around, hand the football to Rashad Stevenson and let the clock roll, you know, and try to pick up second and third and manageables and keep the, keep the chains moving. I think that's what we're gonna just going to continue to see from them. And on the other side, Seattle, I wouldn't be surprised if that's nearly their approach too. They're not necessarily a, just a huge big play style team. They hit big plays, but they're not just a huge big play offense. I think this one's going to be lower scoring. I think both defenses are probably the best units on the field for both teams. 37 and a half is low, but I think we stay underneath the total ultimately. I think it's going to be a pretty boring game. So I'm going to take the under. Kind of wimpish, but that's what I'm going to do here in this one, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think you might be onto something with that under. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. And, you know, Seattle with that great wide receiver crew still plays a very conservative game. Next game up. Hey, we're here in Big D where we got my favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys at home at the crib with the New Orleans Saints coming into town. Hey, we all know the rivalry that this game is. Well, I don't know if the masses know, but, hey, this is a huge rivalry here, man. Uh, there's plenty of Saints fans in the Dallas area, plenty of Dallas fans in the Saints in the New Orleans area. So um, it goes down when these two play. So it should be a fun week and weekend ahead here in Dallas. But I'm excited for the game as well. The Saints looked really good last week. I got to give them credit. I know, I know, I know. They played the Panthers, who's probably the worst team in the league, 32 of 32. But that you still got to go out there and make plays, and make plays did they. Um, but now they're on the road here in Dallas, and Dallas at home at the crib, man, was probably and probably has been the best bet over the last two, three seasons. The Cowboys at home are a different team, monster, and animal and have been on ATS and straight up under Mike McCarthy um, in his tenure. <sighs> the, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the Cowboys. <laughs> um, shocker, I know. <laughs> but I do think we're the better football team, and I think a lot of what we saw from New Orleans last week may be some fool's gold. Uh, they did play the Panthers. I still don't trust Dennis Allen. I still don't trust... Derek Carr and Mitch hit the key on something earlier in the show when he said a lot of the teams in week one had a complete offseason to game plan for the team that they played in week one. So playing the worst team in the league and having, you know, a whole offseason to game plan against them, I'm not surprised that they obliterated them in that fashion. The Cowboys defense might have been one of the best performances in all of week one behind maybe if if even behind the Steelers defense so I think Derek Carr and the Saints offense are going to have a much tougher time this week um I trust the Cowboys receiving core and Dak Prescott a little more in this football game and I trust the history of the Cowboys at home at the crib so they're just a different team monster and animal in at and I think they win this game by 10 13 points in all honesty I'm gonna lay it here with Dallas Mitch how you feeling 
Dallas was my top play last week in the circuit contest. It was, you know, Jay and I split one of my entries and um, I had first pick and it was the Cowboys and uh, I would, I would have made it all over again too, but I sure wish I could have taken the saints with them. Um, it didn't matter. We, you know, we had other teams that won, but the thing is, is that, um, you know, I thought the saints looked pretty good against the Panthers, um, you know, and that game was at home. The Cowboys were on the road in Cleveland. They were actually underdogs in that game and, and just absolutely blew them out of the building. I don't know. I think this game is going to be a tougher game for the Cowboys, but um, I th do think the Cowboys can win this thing. Um, you know, what we've seen from the Cowboys generally is that once they get ahead of these teams at home, we saw it last season, we saw it last week. Once they get ahead of these teams, it is there like they're running downhill and you put if they get out far enough ahead, double digits, 10 points, 11 points, anything like that. Then here comes that pass rush on every single play. And there, there are really no answers to really what probably is the most underrated overall pass rush. Micah Parsons certainly gets his credit. Lawrence gets his credit. But I mean, overall, as a unit, this is one of the best pass rushes in the NFL and uh, just don't get a lot of credit for it. And I don't think the Saints have a lot of answers for that, um, especially from a playmaker at the quarterback position who's going to be able to take, who's going to be able to bail them out on his own. Um, I think, you know, another side note about this particular game. So I'm going to roll with the Cowboys, but on a side note, you know, this game is, you know, 99 out of 100 times, this game's in the 425 Eastern time time slot. And it just tells you how much the uh, networks think about that uh that Patrick Mahomes versus Joe Burrow rematch at 425. Yeah, I was actually kind of shocked not to see this game in that, you know, late slot. But it should be a fun early slot. I think Brady's on the call again for in this one. So I, I wasn't able to hear Brady on the call last week because we were in Vegas. So a lot going on there, a lot of background noise. But we'll see um, here in this game what's going on. I can't wait. It's probably my favorite game of the week. Next game up, we got an NFC East divisional battle. Hey, both of these two teams took L's last week. Some L's don't really shape up to be the same as others, <laughs> though. The Giants really, really looked bad last week, Mitch. Do you trust them this week? They're short dogs here on the road in Washington. How you feeling? Well, I think that if I'm a fan of, of both of these teams, which I'm not a fan of either, and they were both my teams, I would feel a lot better about what's going on in Washington than I do in New York, where they made a commitment to, you know, one player, made not a commitment to another player. And really, they kind of made the commitment to the guy that wasn't the better player. And then we've seen the Giants make, stay not committed to better players all along. It was Odell Beckham Jr. It's now Saquon Barkley. You're exiling these guys. The only constant is Daniel Jones. And he's the wrong guy. I mean, I think it's because you're tied into a, a longer-term contract now, and you're not going to be able to unload this guy to anybody. So you, the Giants are in for a very, very uh, tough, tough spot. I think Jaden Daniels is going to be very good for the, for the commanders, and I think, you know, cutting bait with some of these older players that they had, um, guys that were part of it, just says, you know what, we're going to turn over a new leaf, we're going to make a new start and start things fresh. And I think, you know what? I think they start fresh right here and get the win. I like the I like the Commanders in this spot. I like the Commanders too. Um, I really don't understand the line movement. The I saw I think the Commanders open at three. We're now at the current time of shooting this at one and a half. Commanders. Shit. If the, if the books gonna give me a pick them on Sunday, I'm on the Commanders. Um, again, I'm gonna continue to say this until I'm proven otherwise. I think the worst quarterback in the league is Daniel Jones. Short, sweet, simple. Since signing that contract, I don't know if many people know, he has more pick sixes than touchdown passes. <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> um, I'm with you, Mitch. They let the wrong guy go. Saquon, who had an amazing week one game, um, should still be in a Giants uniform. And then they probably should have been they would have been better off in my opinion finding somebody in free agency or rolling with a backup or anything than with daniel jones here it's kind of quite sad what's going on with new york i'm 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 selling all stock on new york and um the i'm with you though on the commanders at least the pieces for the commanders you see the pathway to 
some success. I don't see any pathway forward for the Giants. I see none. So I'm getting the commanders at home at the crib who I thought played the tougher team last week in Tampa. I, Tampa's so underrated. Um, played them fairly tough. Um, and I think at home in their home opener in this one, I think they show up and get this done. So I'm on the commanders. I don't want to overcomplicate. I think they're the better team. I think the Giants are always and forever be overrated and overvalued. And as long as Daniel Jones is under center, I'm going to continue to A, take an interception from him every game. We might as well bet the pick six if you can find it. And we might as well just continue to fade the Giants and try to make as much free money as possible. It's like there's more first round Giants draft picks that are actually have production on other teams than on the Giants. I mean, their only good roster move they've made with the number one pick was getting rid of Tony. Because I saw Evan Ingram catching some balls on on Sunday as well. Yeah, and you're right. So, you know, their first round draft picks just don't hit for them. And then they go somewhere else and make plays. <laughs> Next game up, speaking of those Tampa Bay Bucks, they're out on the road facing the Detroit Lions. Lions, seven-point favorites here in this one. Both teams were playoff teams a year ago. Both teams won playoff games. Yet they got the Lions as a full touchdown favorite at home at the crib. The Lions have been the best cover team in the NFL over the last couple seasons. Dan Campbell is the cover machine coach. Mitch, does that mean you're laying seven, though, here with them in this one? Absolutely not. I, I was not all that impressed with the Lions last week wearing down the Rams uh, team, you know, that they should have really handled fairly easily. I had the Rams in that game, you know, with plus the points, and I was feeling pretty good about it until well, they kicked that field goal and it was going to overtime. But Matthew Stafford throwing that interception in the end zone, and it's like you take away that interception that Stafford throws, which was a horrible Stafford in Detroit type touchdown or uh, interception. Uh, you know, it the game goes a different way. I think when we look at this Tampa Bay Bucks team, I think they're going to be a value team the 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 rest of the way unless they really can string a lot of wins together. I mean, under the radar, uh, not getting a lot of publicity. Certainly, no one's a big fan of Baker Mayfield, but this is, they put thirty seven points on the board last week. You know, in the Lions who are known for giving up some points. And I know that pass rush is going to get to Mayfield. We know he's going to get sacked in this game. But I also think they're going to put up enough points in the game. And Dan Campbell, another one of these guys that makes very odd decisions as a head coach, certainly leaves the door open. I'm going to take the points with the Bucs. I'm with you again. and We we're, we're seem to be in agreement this week in the NFL. I'm on the Bucs. Um, you know, Baker Mayfield – has been a baller since being in Tampa. Let's just call a spade a spade. No matter what number you want to look at from even last week, the Bucks' offense rated off the charts. And I think their defense is probably the most underrated defense in all of the league. Again, I think people forget. People think the Philadelphia Eagles are the best team in the NFC. They lost last year in the playoffs to the Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> And uh, the Bucks just keep seeing to fly under the radar. I think Mitch hit the nail right on the head. They're going to be a value team all season. The Lions are a good team. The Lions are probably going to be a top three team in the NFC this season. I'm not saying that they're not better than Tampa. That's not what I'm saying. But I don't think the gap is seven points wide. I just don't. In all honesty, I think Tampa is live to win this game outright, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so... I don't think the Lions are a team that's just going to run the table this season. They're not that style team. Jared Goff is still their quarterback, although he's a really good game manager. He kind of in that Brock Purdy um, bucket for me. They don't win every single game they play, and I wouldn't be surprised, man. Dogs cash in the NFL sometimes. This one might be a, a shot on a dog that I like this week. I'm on Tampa plus the seven, and I'm probably going to sprinkle them outright to go into Detroit and get it done, Mitch. Yeah, you know, I just think that um, this could be a physical game. The, the Lions coming off an extremely physical game on the Bucks. You know, I think it was a little bit more of an easy win for them against the Commanders in a game that they dominated from start to finish. Let's keep it rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Next game up, we got the Indianapolis Colts out on the road facing the Green Bay Packers. Packers, three-point home dogs in this one. We all know what happened last week. Down in Brazil, Jordan Love, you know, he tore his MCL. He's going to miss significant time is what I will say. So, Mitch, 
We know who's under center. <laughs> it's the Malik Willis show for the Green Bay Packers. That's why they're such a significant dog in this football game. I had the Colts last week as my top play. Um, they did cover the point spread. Shout out to them. This game's tough. This game's tough. They were at home last week against a, a good team in the Texans um, as a dog, and I thought grabbing the points was the right play. Now we're laying points in a tough building like Lambeau Field. I know Malik's under center, um, so I know that's worth about, you know, three points on its own, at least, at minimum. <laughs> so I think that puts me on the Colts. Um I'm going to bank on the rushing attack for Indianapolis. You know, they're not really at putting Anthony Richardson in the position to lose football games. Like I think some other teams are putting their young quarterbacks in position. Um, I like how they they have one of the best rushing attacks in all of the NFL. So this is a tough spot laying three on the road with Indy. I, I'm going to be real. It's a tough spot. Anthony Richardson is young. He hasn't – I don't know if he's really played in a venue like Lambeau Field. It's probably not Lambeau that we've come used to knowing with Malik Willis under center, but I think Indy's the play here. I think the rushing attack for the Colts is what I'm going to lean on in this football game. Tough game. I want to I want to deep dive this one a little more as the week progresses, but as of right now, I think I'm on the Colts. Mitch, how you feeling? Yeah, I'm with you on the Colts. It's to me, it's uh, you know fading of Malik Willis, but I wasn't high on the Packers to begin with. I thought that they were overrated and overbuilt and all of that other stuff coming into this season. I think the only angle that there was for the Packers was Jordan Love and that QB rating um, over the last half of last season. Outside of that, I mean, this is the same Packers who are you know a lot of money in the quarterback, not a lot of money in a lot of the other positions, not a lot of help, maybe a little bit more than you know. The Aaron Rodgers contracts, but still, you know, the bulk of the money going to one guy and it just doesn't work in the NFL. And Jordan Love, you know, wasn't that guy. And I'll tell you who else isn't that guy, Malik, who now takes over for that position, regardless of what he makes. And uh, I've got news for you. It's going to be a rough run for the Packers fans. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the Colts. Next game up. Division battle. We got the Los Angeles Rams out on the road facing the Arizona Cardinals. Both teams, one could say, could have got wins last week but didn't. 0-1 um, here in this one. Cardinals only a one-point favorite. Mitch, how you feeling here in this one, the division battle? This is one of the tougher games out there. With Nakua going down for the Rams last week, that was a massive loss because clearly he was an integral part of the game plan for that game. And, you know, him not being there to execute it, you know, we saw a little bit of misstep here and there, and that could have been the difference in that game. You know, when we look at uh, the Cardinals, they had the Bills dead to right. It writes in one of the tougher places to play in, in, uh, Orchard Park and, uh, you know, playing, uh, you know, against the Bills team and the Bills Mafia all at the same time. They certainly came out gangbusters, just weren't able to close the deal. Boy, I sure wish this game had a little bit different points, right? Because I see it a little differently. It's tough for me to get behind the Cardinals laying points here against this Rams team because I do think that the Rams have the edge at the coaching spot as well as experience. It's going to be a lean to the Rams on the road who play their second of two in a row on the yeah, Mitch, I think this one's really tough, too. This one's really tough. I think this we're going to have to disagree. We ain't done a lot of that here on this show today, but I think this one we're going to disagree a little bit. I'm going to take the Cardinals. Um, I will agree, though. I do think the the Rams have the better head coach in Sean McVay. Um, I think, in all honesty, the quarterback matchup, I know Matthew Stafford has a ring, but in a vacuum – I think the quarterback matchup is pretty much a wash is what I'll say because I'm somebody who's high, super high on Kyler Murray. Um, he made a lot of plays last week. They should have won that football game at Buffalo. Um, he made a really crucial error at the end of that play, and I had Marvin Harrison, who was naked, wide open uh, for the win. He just, I don't know. Sometimes it'd be like that, man. Sometimes it'd be like that. This is a tough game, fellas. Rams – one could argue should have won that game last week, man, uh, but they just couldn't pull it off. I'm going to take the Cardinals at home, though. I, I think the home field advantage, home opener, kind of gives them the slight edge in this football game. I think um, 
Kyler makes some magical plays at the end. It's probably going to be one game that comes right down to the wire, just like both of these two games, their, their games did last week. This one's going to be one your heart's on a string, um, and it's going to come down to whoever has the ball last. Wouldn't be surprised. I would probably put in an overtime bet for this game. I think we're probably in for overtime here in this one. These are just who these two teams have been over the last couple of seasons. A shootout style game, really good quarterback play in this game in two different completely styles. Um I'm going to take the Cardinals, though. I think they beat them in the end, probably on like a two-point conversion or something. Um, and I would probably just go Cardinals money line because I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a weird, maybe even a one-point win or something weird like that. So um, the line, like Mitch said, is 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 I think this line makes it in the NFL. They're dialed in like any other, like no other sport. They're dialed in. So one, it's probably perfect. I'm probably just going to go Cardinals money line personally. Yeah, I could easily be swayed in this one. I, I could see, I could make a case either way. I just, you know, we're on this show. I've got to give out a pick, but it doesn't mean I have to bet it. Fair, fair. We know we don't bet every single NFL game every week. We talk about it. We want to. Man, I don't go to the window with every single one of them. Don't does doesn't mean I'm out at halftime though. I could I could easily be back in at halftime. Thanks. <laughs> Let's keep it rolling. Next game up, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers out on the road facing the Denver Broncos. Broncos, three-point home dogs in this one. Steelers laying three on the road. Steelers did get the win last week um, at Atlanta. I thought the defense and T.J. Watt looked right on brand. That's exactly who we thought the Steelers were. The Falcons, maybe they're not going to be as good as advertised. Um, Justin Fields probably getting the start again this week for um, Pittsburgh, I didn't think he was all that great. I didn't think he was terrible. I thought he didn't wreck the car and just did what, you know, um, a lot of the Pittsburgh quarterbacks have done in recent memory, and that's just let the defense be the defense and just steer the car in the right direction. Um, I don't want to lay three with Pittsburgh on the road, though. I kind of lean towards the Denver Broncos at home at the crib. Home opener, Bo Nix and company. That Broncos defense looked okay last week. It looked okay, is what I will say. Um, this is another tough game. I think this is a tough week. I'm not. Oh, I don't love this week as much as I loved last week. But I'm going to take the Broncos at home at the crib at the, as a home dog. I, getting three. I think. I, I think that's the play. I still have question marks about this offense for Pittsburgh. Um, we were getting points with them last week on the road. Now expecting them to lay points. I just. I'm not there with them yet. Um, I do expect their defense to give trouble to Bo Nix and this Denver Broncos offense, but I don't know if ultimately that's enough to lay points in this one. Broncos, I think, can win this game outright, get their first win of the season. Pittsburgh, I'm still kind of expecting to be on that cusp of 500 this season. Give me the Denver plus the points in my back pocket. Mitch, how you feeling? Yeah, I think this is a tough one as well. Last week, I actually really liked the Steelers, and the closer we got to game time, the more I liked it. So it was one of those games that I didn't give out as a premium pick with our premium picks, but I did bet the game, and I did bet on the Steelers in that one. I had a good NFL Sunday, and Jay did as well. So, of course, you should always check out our premium picks over at Pick Dogs. But, you know, I thought that the Denver game was one of those just weird games against uh, against the Seahawks. I, we did have, I did like Denver in that game. And the thing is, is that I kind of like him again here, but I think this number really sets up for a push because I do think that, that yeah. the odds makers have it right at three. I think it is going to come down to three, and I think it is going to be a field goal as time expires. So I think it's going to be a hard-fought game, probably uh, you know, a physical game, and I think it is going to be decided by a field goal, and I think it will be Denver kicking it. Weird thing about that Denver-Seattle game last week. Two safeties in the same game, one for each team. You know, you get on that, yeah, you're getting six and a half, you're on the weird score, and then another safety. How often do you see that? Yeah, I know. It was a weird week last <laughs> week. Week one, football is back, baby. Um, that's why we love watching the games, because usually you see something you ain't never seen before. Sometimes it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Next up, game of the week. I know everybody's excited to watch this one. We got Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Brr, Joe Shiesty <laughs> out on the road facing the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs, five-point home favorites, man. Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, when these two meet up, I think the two best quarterbacks in the league 
Hey, I'm always tuned in. Mitch, I'm super excited about this football game. Are you? How are you feeling about it? I think it's going to be a good one. I expect to see a lot bigger effort from the Cincinnati Bengals in this game than what we saw against the New England Patriots. My guess, tough week of practice after the Patriots ran for 170 yards on 39 carries over the Bengals, who did nothing but seem to make a lot of mistakes. Two fumbles lost, three fumbles total in that game, and uh, you know that really was the difference maker. Burrow could not did not get a touchdown pass in that game. Threw for only 164 yards himself. Jamar Chase um, looked like he needed help from other receivers, and it just seemed like they were dropping football after dropping football, and just wasn't getting the help that he needed. You know, I just think that the Bengals will play a better game. They might have even been looking ahead to this game, as they certainly have had good success against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs over the years. Of course, the Chiefs are the Chiefs' winners by a toe in that opening Thursday night game. Probably one of the coolest things that we'll see all season long. I think at the end of the season, when we look back at all the key plays from the year, they'll show that one. We'll be like, oh man, I remember that. Right? It was like it was just one of those games that they'll probably, you know, we're talking about it still. Well, we're going to be talking about it forever, you know, because. Uh, you know, it just did come down to a toe at the end of the game. And, of course, when he held up the two to go for two, boy, Chiefs betters were dead in the water at that point. And, uh, you know, the thing is, they end up they end up cashing. So I think in this one, though, I think Chiefs betters might be dead in the water. You know, they, they seem to win when Taylor's there. They seem to lose when, when, when she's not there. The only Taylor they're going to find here is Zach Taylor, and that's bad news for the Chiefs because he's got one of the best records against them of anybody. <laughs> That was pretty good. I agree with you. That was pretty good. Um, I had the Patriots as a premium. Um, the reason I ultimately did that, yeah, everybody knows I love me some Joe Burrow. Joe Burr, Joe Shiesty. Um, Love me some Jamar Chase, and I love me some Cincinnati Bengals. The thing is, is this team just starts season slow. They, that's who they are. And they finish seasons extremely fast. Um, I don't usually like betting the Bengals until week three, week four, when they catch their footing, catch their stride. And I think that's still what I'm subscribing to. To be honest, fellas, I'm just going to be a thousand percent real with y'all. Last week, I thought that the Bengals against the Patriots were going to be one of the most public plays on the board. And again, this week, I think they're going to be one of the most public plays on the board. And I know that sounds crazy to say going up against probably the most public team there is in the Kansas City Chiefs. But everybody knows that Cincinnati has had success against against the, the Chiefs. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that the, that the Bengals shot themselves in the foot last week and they're expecting them to come back and play here well again this week i just don't see it especially not in arrowhead man not in arrowhead um not early in the season i think the the chiefs win this game fairly comfortably like probably like two touchdowns i do i think the Bengals are in some serious trouble here early in the season and then they're gonna muck around and be really good late in the season kind of like they always are the Chiefs, man, I think they're on a crash course for a three-peat. I keep saying that, man. And I think this season they addressed their main problem from last season, which was the receiving core. And we saw it week one, and I think we see it again here. Um, I don't know if the Chiefs will be able to run the football quite as effectively as the Patriots did, but I trust the quarterback to be able to. Um, so got to continue to fade Cincinnati, man. I'm, I'm going to fade them. I know that Mahomes as a favorite over three is only like 48%, but I think that's the play in this one, y'all. I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the Chiefs, Mitch. I'm laying the points. I got a fade, Joe, but the Cincinnati Bengals. Chiefs still sitting with a few key injuries here, so I definitely put a, uh, a check on the injury report before putting any money on this game with Chris Jones still banged up and, of course, T. Higgins still doubtful for the Bengals. Yeah. Definitely want to keep an eye on as we get closer to Sunday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sunday Night Football. We got the Caleb Williams show with the Chicago Bears out on the road facing the Houston Texans and CJ Stroud. Two young, really good rookie quarterbacks, or at least that's what they're selling. I think one of them's extremely good. The other one, well, I still think there's some question marks. Hey, 
The Bears got a win last week, but it was not because of their rookie quarterback, uh, the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams. It was because of the other young quarterback for the other team who just gifted the Bears the game. Um, Levis, Lass, however you want to shape it. <laughs> um, look, I'm taking the Houston Texans and laying the six. My top play last week was the Colts fading the Texans, I thought. Division battles, tough to be trying to lay points with the Texans on the road in that style game. Um, I think the Texans, though, in this one are head and shoulders the better football team. I think the Texans' defense is probably better than that Titans' defense who made – I don't even think probably. I think the Texans' defense is better than the Titans' defense from a week ago who made Caleb Williams look like deer in headlights in that game. you got to remember, that game was at home. Now you're on the road in Houston, prime time. It just sets up as a really terrible spot for the for the Bears and the um, and Caleb Williams and company. Remember, the Bears were down 17-0 at home to the Tennessee Titans. That's what happened. I don't think they'll be able to come back from that against a legitimate offense um, in the Houston Texans in this one, Mitch. I'm going to lay the points on Sunday Night Football with Houston. Are you with me? Oh, absolutely. They face a much tougher defense and a much better defensive coach this week, the Bears. And you have to remember, they lost in every facet of the game last week against the Titans, except for the final score, which is the only thing that matters. But the thing is, it doesn't mean it's going to matter week after week. The The best Bears teams are these type of teams that kind of win ugly and their defense, you know, does most of the talking. But the thing is, is that when you're counting on the defense to score points on block punts and interception returns, and that's the only offense that you're really getting, I don't think that's going to get it done against a, a, a team like the Texans and a QB like Stroud, who simply doesn't make the mistakes. And I think that's what made him such a good rookie last year, is that he didn't necessarily have to be the hero every time out, but he didn't lose games for his team. And I don't see him doing that here against the Bears. I mean, looking at some of these quick statistics, Tennessee, five more first downs than the Bears last week. Tennessee, twice as much rushing yards as the Bears. Tennessee, twice as much passing yards as the Bears last week. Sacked, about the same. You know, everything, passes, um, attempt to complete it. Caleb Williams, 50%. Worse than Levis. He was worse than Levis. Of course, Levis had the interception that went for six points the other way. Really, the difference in that game, also the penalties, um, more penalties for the Titans. I don't at time of possession, it was all Titans. I just don't see the uh, the Bears being as fortuitous this week. Unfortunately, a lot of these primetime games usually end up exciting. We saw, you know, the the Packers, Eagles, even with Malik in there, come down to with a possibility on the last play. We saw the toe on Thursday night. Um, we we saw Sunday night, you know, the uh, Rams and and the uh, Lions play in another thriller. Uh, this one's probably going to be closer to that Jets Niners game. I, I think that the uh, I think the Texans are going to be the Niners in this one. I'm taking the Texans. Fair enough. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Last game of the week, ladies and gentlemen, Monday night football. Got a good game. Got a good game on Monday night. I'm excited for it. We got the Philadelphia Eagles at home in Philly with the Atlanta Falcons coming into town. Mitch, hey, Philly won a a good game in Brazil. Um, Atlanta, well, they got TJ Wadded. Um, (laughs) How do you think this game shapes out? Oh, good news for the Falcons. Chick-fil-A is open. Bad news for the Falcons. They're on the road to Philly for Philly's home opener, returning home from Brazil, where it was odd because we saw the Eagles and a lot of the things that they offer, but I think with the condition of the field in that game made the Eagles probably look a little worse than they might actually be, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I have concerns about Jalen Hurts and his ability to stay healthy over the long haul. We saw him towards the end of last season look beaten up, kind of like a boxer in the 12th round of a a championship fight because of the beating he had taken over the course of the season. But he looked fresh last week and uh, certainly looked to be a lot better. That field condition is just nobody could get their footing at all, not even Malik. And the thing is, is that, you know, we looked at, um, you know, Saquon Barkley, who just really looked at home in this Philly offense and uh, really looked to be in sync with all the guys there. I mean, I don't, I think, you know, 
uh, Smith, the receiver for the Eagles, probably the most underrated player in the game, the former Heisman winner. I mean, this guy is just simply a beast. He just catches everything that's anywhere near him. You just never see like a bad drop or a bad route or anything out of this guy. And it's like, if you can do that, and then you have, you know, home run hitters all around you, very, very tough to stop. On the other side, the Falcons, I mean, you, you couldn't stop Justin Fields. You're in big, big trouble here in Philly. Um, I, I, I think the Phillies, I think the Eagles win real big in this game. Yeah, everybody knows I'm a Philadelphia hater, man, um, and I am. But I'm also a realist, and I think they're the play in this football game, sadly enough. I faded them in week one. I thought Jordan Love and company were going to be able to pull that game out. Um, and then it was the Malik Willis show. We know how it turned out. But uh, in this one, I really didn't like what I saw from Kirk Cousins in Atlanta in week one. I know it was against the Steelers defense, which is probably and will be one of the best in the NFL this season. But Kirk Cousins, you got to remember, he's an older guy. What is How old is he, like 35 or such? Coming off a, an Achilles injury. Um Who's to say that this guy is going to be the same? And it was evident to me in week one that he wasn't the same. He didn't have the same throw power. He didn't have the same throwing motion. He looked uncomfortable. His number is ugly. Who the hell wears 18? Um, like, it just, everything about the Falcons was off to me in week one. Um, and I think Philadelphia is just flat out the better team. Am I as high on Philly as everybody else is? No, I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit on Philly. But at the same time, Saquon did look kind of sweet in the Eagles jersey if he scored the touchdown. <laughs> um, as disgusting as it did look. Just Jalen Hurts, I still got major question marks about Jalen Hurts, but I don't think he'll wreck the car in this one. I don't think they'll ask him to do too much. He's surrounded by too many weapons for him to wreck the car. So give me the Eagles. Monday Night Football, they probably win this game by 10 points. Yeah, I just think that, you know, maybe some of the primetime games this week might not shape up to be as good as they were a week ago. Wouldn't be surprised. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate each and every one of y'all for another great week here at Pig Dogs. Hey, we just cooked up every NFL game on the card. Mitch, we're in for a pretty good week, too. I'm excited. How about you? Yeah, you know, it's – um you know, the, we, these shows give us a chance to go over all the games. Of course, we do it in the middle of the week to get these out early. We're going to have a lot more information on these games over here at Pick Dogs, including our Sunday morning show, which Jay hosts. And, of course, while we give out picks on every game, it doesn't mean we bet every single game. And if you're looking for the games that we like the best, the ones that we're betting today, head on over to PickDogs.com. Our cappers, including Jay and myself, absolutely kicked it through the uprights in, in week one. And I plan on doing it all season long. And I know Jay does as well. Hey, he hit the nail right on the head, man. Check out what I got going over at Pick Dogs Premium for the week. Let's make some money this week, man. Let's continue to kick the crap out of the books betting the NFL. We appreciate each and every one of y'all that continue to tune in. Money making week. Mitch, thank you for joining me. We'll be back next week. We out of here.